r slash ask reddit what was the weirdest rule you had to follow in school when i was in high school the phrase epic fail was a thing one of my teachers became sick of it and banned it it was quickly replaced with catastrophic error in seventh grade my lang and lit teacher tried to get us to stop saying shut up and somebody came up with an alternative be quiet with a passion it quickly became a very popular thing to say when I was like 6 my mom wouldn't let me say shut up, so being a 6 year old I started using a new phrase I had at school. Duck off my dad kicked the duck out of my ass that day. Way back in elementary school we weren't allowed to walk around the school in groups larger than 3 because it intimidated the primary grades like ducking what? Wait, is that? 4 5th graders dear god why? They didn't allow the boys to have door on the bathroom stalls in high school. They let teachers use those bathrooms. Nothing like walking in on your 300 pounds history teacher dropping a deuce. The same rule was enacted in my high school for two weeks. It had to stop after a large group of boys would get together during class and wander from bathroom to bathroom finding people who were taking a poop and then yell, clap, cheer them on for pooping. In the girls room, if other girls heard you pooping you'd be considered gross and they'd giggle at you and say rude things under their breath. Cause you know. Teenage girls apparently aren't humans with normal body functions. When I was in elementary school, we had a rule that kids were strictly not allowed to touch rocks. No rocks. Not pebbles. Not big rocks. No rocks. I got put in time out a few times for touching rocks. The problem was, our playground was built on a pebble pit. If you fell or wanted to sit on the ground to play, you could very well be singled out and punished for touching rocks. It was a huge tattle fest too. Kids would catch others touching the rocks and run to tell the pay coaches who would immediately interrogate you. Did you touch rocks? Tell me the truth. I found a really cool rock in first grade and decided to show it to my coach. I told her it looked like an alligator skull. She smiled at me, took the rock, and chucked it as far as she could. Then bitterly told me, don't touch rocks. If you kept touching rocks. You'll be made to walk around the playground in circles sometimes until you had sufficiently learned your lesson. I once walked in circles with a few other kids until playground time was over. It felt like forever, but it was probably like 15 minutes. TL. Doctor, my school had a don't touch any rocks rule. Edit for those asking. As far as I know, they never told us why. Maybe they had a good reason. I don't know. All I know is that rock touching was forbidden. This reads like some weird Ayn Rand and Dr. Seuss collaborative work. Like a dystopian society story in little golden book form. I dig it. He who throws. A novel. My school dates back to the 13th century so we had some archaic rules still floating around my personal favorite was that the head boy gained the right to grow facial hair and graze his sheep on the headmaster's lawn. Whoa. That's pretty generous that the headmaster shares his lawn. He's just doing it for the free sheep shit fertilizer. No band shirts at my Christian school. But the only ones that would be recognized were Christian bands. So you could get away with almost anything else. Red hot chili peppers. Hey, that into cooking? Would love to see how a bad religion shirt got handled. Metallica? It's a steel mill. In middle school we weren't allowed to clap during assemblies because the vice principal thought it was too disruptive. We could only do jazz hands. This seems like a rule that was made up just because it was secretly hilarious to watch a room full of teenagers do simultaneous jazz hands with deadpan face expressions. Plausible. I had severe kidney problems when I was in secondary school. The rule was that one we were in the yard. You couldn't leave the yard until break lunch was over. Like they literally locked the gates to stop you from leaving once in the yard. I had multiple arguments with teachers for not letting me go to the toilet. Then getting beached at in classes for asking to go or being late. Why would you prevent kids from going to the toilet? Especially during breaks? When else are you supposed to go? I went to a school in a baddish area. The thinking was that they didn't want kids indoors where they could wreck things. Like in my last year someone set fire to the gym toilets. But it was was well known that I had problems that meant I had to go when I asked. Edit. I mean the bathroom itself not the toilet. There was silent time in the lunchroom in Catholic elementary school at the beginning of lunch. Ostensibly for prayers grace. I remember sneezing due to allergies and having to miss recess. Never forgave those ducking nuns. 
God is merciful but humans on the other hand. I've often heard about these nuns in schools. Were they that awfully strict? No same sex hugging. Really weird rule. Apparently some kid got sick. And their parent blamed same sex hugging. My high school went the other way. No heterosexual hugging. They were scared shitless to say anything to the known homosexual couples though. Couldn't dance. Show our shoulders. Or play games on school campus. School dances were sit down meals instead. As we were not allowed to dance. God is against dancing apparently. Are you from the town and footloose? LOL. Seriously though. Why even host a school dance if you aren't going to allow dancing? They weren't called that. But we all know that they are called school dances at regular schools. Also one was called prom. And prom you are meant to dance. Just not at this school. No running in the schoolyard or playground during recess or lunch. How tf do you expect to stop 500 children from running while they're out there playing? I had the opposite. Run as much as you want. But don't stay still. Monitors bothered me so much with that. I didn't want to move too much when the ground was in ice because once a kid was sliding a patch of ice. Bumped in my legs and made me fall pretty hard on my head. I ended up in the hospital for a neck injury. I was in pain for two weeks. And now I hurt my neck very easily. It's not like I was fat or didn't move around every other time. And I guess this is why we weren't allowed to run. Some teachers insisting that the bell does not mean you are dismissed. Beach please. That's exactly what that means. Even worse. Some of my teachers would hold students after the bell as a way of punishment. It honestly sucked having to explain why I was late to the next class every time that happened. Late to class. Huh. Well you can spend the time you missed here. After class. Then you get stuck in a loop. Our high school got a wild hair up their collective ass that we were spending too much time in the bathrooms. So they tried to set up a bathroom schedule where you could only use them during certain hours of the day without a pass. And to get a pass you had to convince a member of the staff that you really had to go. They had staff members guarding the bathrooms to make sure you had a pass to use the bathroom. It wasn't until a combination of classroom walkouts, bathroom sit-ins, citations of laws, parent complaints, and several insinuations that the rule was somehow racist that they gave in and rescinded the rule. Edit. I've been getting a lot of questions about how the policy being universal could be construed as racist. The issue of race came up when it became apparent that certain staff members made it more difficult for non-white students to receive a bathroom pass. I. E. A white student just had to ask. Whereas a black student would be grilled on the whys and wherefores of their bathroom needs. This was a very small group of teachers. But even one was too many. Edit 2. Whys and wherefores whilst redundant is still a proper idiom. And several insinuations that the rule was somehow racist that always works. My high school has a 20 stroke 20 rule. You can't leave the class for the 20 minutes after the bell. And you can't leave 20 minutes before the bell. One period is 70 minutes long. No one obeys this rule. In secondary school. High school. We were forced to leave the school in full uniform at the end of the school. Meaning no jackets unless you were out of the main gates which are very far outdoors so if it was raining you were ducked. Thank god that rule only lasted 2 weeks. It always amazes me how little foresight rule makers have with things like dress code. My school doesn't allow non-school jackets. Despite the fact that it can get surprisingly cold for a subtropical area and the only school jackets are thin fleeces that do nothing if you were cold already. Ducking infuriating if you actually lost yours. We had a hallway only for 6th graders in middle school. It was really strange because it was in the middle of the entire school. But if any teachers found you there, you were sent to the principal's office. That reminds me of my middle school. It was 6th 8th grade. And the school was 3 floors. Top for 6th grades. Middle for 8th graders. Bottom for 7th. You had to stick to your level. Besides the cafeteria and gym of course which were all on the middle floor. We had one way always one year in junior high because it was overcrowded and they thought that might make movement between classes more efficient. They had teachers in the hallways between every class to make sure you didn't go the wrong way. Even if your locker was like 10 featuring the other direction. Super inconvenient. Edit. Wow. My first. 1k comment. Guess all those extra laps around the school were worth it in the end. 
This is actually pretty hilarious. Annoying if you were to go to the school. But in retrospect. Sounds funny. Have to do a circle around the school if you have a class in the next room but the hallway direction goes the other way. Jimmy why are you late every CLU duck I know why Janet. No Nike brand shoes. I grew up in a bad area of Chicago. That is now going through the third wave of gentrification. Apparently gangs at the time identified with Nike shoes. If you had on Nike shoes the teachers would put masking tape over the Nike logo. Edit. This comment got me to 200k comment karma. Thanks. That was my goal in 2018. The waves of gentrification are. Working class then artsy people then young professionals then people from upper middle class. First you have the Nike gang then comes the masking tape gang. I guess it's time for Gucci band then. Because of gang affiliations, we were banned from wearing three items of red or blue. Things got a bit hairy on school spirit days, where they encouraged us to wear our school colors, red, white and blue. Just turn spirit days into KKK rallies edit. Well this is my highest rated anything. The 6 inch rule. We weren't allowed within 6 inches of another person wild American. We don't use inch or shall could you stop hundreds of students from being close proximity to each other you're making a rule for adolescent teenagers. It called the 6 inch rule. Hilarity ensues. It only takes one girl to stand a couple of inches from someone and when questioned say. But miss. He told me this was 6 inches. My high school started to do a school shooter drill twice a semester my senior year. They had a dude come in the front door during lunch blow an air horn and shout this is a shooter drill. Run. He had a water gun and would shoot kids with it and then tell them they had been killed. Me and my friends casually finished our lunch as he shot us then left out the kitchen side door to leave the building. Half the senior class ended up leaving as they had this guy go through half the school and through the freshman center over the course of half an hour. It was pretty ridiculous and happened several times. Usually during lunch. This actually kinda sounds like fun. Imagine it breaking out into a whole water gun fight between the dude and the seniors. That would have been the best senior prank. One day, a group of seniors pull out their own water guns and take him out. It had probably cost a suspension and an assembly on gun safety, but hey. No hugging. All of the girls in elementary including myself would hug each other if we were friends. We would also hug certain teachers because some were really amazing people and helped out less fortunate students like me. We were only allowed to fist bump. Both the teachers and students did it anyway despite the principal monitoring the hallways all the time to try to stop it. Duck you, Ms. McRae, edit, to those asking. This was in the Halton region of Ontario, Canada. My school band hugged when my sister was there. It was because some girls were hugging and that hugging turned into hand holding and kissing. And of course being a Christian school this was blasphemous. So they decided nobody could hug at all. Edit jokes on them though. The hugging ban did nothing to stop me from being a giant lesbian. Not really a rule. More of a if this isn't illegal, then this should be sort of think. Someone emptied all the soap in the boys bathroom onto the floor my freshman year. And the school retaliated by leaving the dispensers empty for the next 4 years. It was disgusting. Travel soap kept in my bag through high school. We had a lesson about how fire needed oxygen to continue burning. So, they said a fire would eventually go out if in a contained room with no extra oxygen. Our teacher then assigned a different student every other week to be in charge of making sure all the windows were closed before leaving if there was a fire thankfully. We never had an actual fire. Oh shit a fire. I'm ducking out of here. Everyone out except Jimmy. Get the windows Jimmy. The fire alarm doesn't dismiss you I dismiss you. From outside. The fire alarm doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. My English teacher said this one year as the fire alarms were blaring. There was a chemical fire. But thank duck Mrs. MCA made us save our work first. In elementary school we were not allowed to stand in circles because standing in circles leads to the gang life. Little did they know that us real thugs prefer gang banging in octagons. No high fives. In fact, no contact with one another whatsoever. This was in middle school. The staff was tired of watching kids groping each other, I imagine. No high fives gripping he must have been giving high fives wrong my whole life. I've told this story before, and 20 years after the fact I'm still not happy about this. 
In any case, when I started high school the entire school was open campus for lunch. That year, however, some of the sophomores were acting up off campus, so our principal, in his infinite wisdom decided that starting the next school year it would be open campus only for juniors and seniors. Think about this, the sophomores, who caused the trouble, who then became juniors and therefore this rule didn't apply to, weren't punished, but us freshmen, who became sophomores and weren't the ones causing the problems, were punished for what they did, so, I had open campus my freshman, junior, and senior years, it was closed my sophomore year, still think that was unfair. Maybe they thought it was that age group that would cause all the trouble? That's still some bullshit though. That would piss me off. Our middle school picked a yearly motto to symbolize the spirit of the year. One year. It was just because you can. Doesn't mean you should. They translated it into Latin and everything and printed it on flyers all over the school. Not exactly a rule. But it was both weird and completely useless. It was entirely unclear what it meant to both staff and students. Was it in reference to drugs, homework, going into an AP versus regular class, having sex, edit? To add that it was made even more ridiculous by the fact that our school's mission was a Virgil quote, they can because they think they can. So the full year's statement was they can because they think they can. Just because you can. Doesn't mean you should. It was a beta reference to itself. How the duck do you type your username? No stomping on soda cans laying on their side and walking around with them attached to your shoes. Given how specific this is, I feel like it might be justified. My senior year of high school, the kids used to skip class by going to use the bathroom and never come back in hopes the teacher didn't notice they left. To try and stop this they made us sign a timeout log. Not that weird right? Well when that eventually did nothing to stop kids skipping. They started to make us carry around trackers to monitor our locations. They even would come and check on us if we were standing still anywhere outside of class for more than 5 minutes. Eventually the kids rejected big brother and just smashed them all at the same time. Cost too much to replace and they couldn't punish us all. In my middle school, students weren't allowed to wear any clothing with a logo, symbol, or image. And I have no idea why. Bullying. Easy to abuse somebody for having shit brands. No brands. No issue. In theory. In practice a ball ache to police. I was bullied plenty. But it was never about my clothes. Nobody likes a tattletale. Well nobody likes a bully either. Punishing being a tattletale is the stupidest ducking thing. I never understood how telling an authority figure this person is doing something that is bothering and or hurting me and won't stop is being a tattletale. In college, we had a professor who assigned seats. She claimed she did it to remember our names but she never remembered our names. We had a teacher who would insist on making boys sit next to girls in class. At the time, aged 11, this was the most horrific thing imaginable. We have to sit next to girls? But, but, why? Few years later on, I wish some of my high school teachers would do this. We had to ask to remove our jackets in class. Not overly weird but I went to a language school and in our French German classes. We were only allowed to take our jackets off if we asked in that language. Kinda hard for an 11 year old who was still using Matilda to spell the word difficulty. Mrs. D. Mrs. I. Mrs. F. F. I. M. R. S. C. Mrs. U. Mrs. L. T. Y. That spells difficulty how do I still remember this? Why are all these women married? I remember my school had an autism test once a year, as if someone could just suddenly develop autism over the course of a year or it could get any worse. Well they may have recently gotten vaccinated s. In high school, skirts were to be no shorter than 12 inches off the floor. People wandered through the halls measuring. Bad for tall people good for short people. My high school had a rule that skirts had to reach your fingertips. I have a long torso. So if the school actually went by that rule I could have gotten away with a very, very short skirt. But instead my school treated dress codes like they were subjective. Teachers could send you to the office even if your outfit followed the written code. So in actuality you couldn't get away with anything higher than knee length. As a teacher, I had to make this rule. Underwear must be worn on Halloween. This was for college students, edit, to clarify, 
underwear must be worn when sitting on the school's chairs during class, and it was because of a male student. Edit 2. No luck finding the costume on my own. Started a level 1 daughter thread for help finding it. Before I describe what actually happened, I need to explain something about weeples. Weeples are, or were, at the very least, these little balls of fluff about the size of golf balls. They're often festooned with googly eyes, hats, plastic feet, or any number of other accessories, making them look rather like a crafting project undertaken by a group of 5 year olds. Weeples were fairly coveted items when I was in 6th and 7th grade, because you could earn them as a reward for selling magazine subscriptions through this fundraising event that the school held every year. And if you had the right Weeples, you actually had the chance to win a fair amount of money in one of the daily contests. If none of this is making much sense, don't worry, it was difficult to understand back then, as well. Basically, you'll get different varieties of weeples for selling different amounts of magazine subscriptions. Then, every day, each weeple bearing student would be allowed to pull a piece of candy out of a hat. If the candy had a sticker on it, the student would win a certain amount of money. That amount would be multiplied by each weeple that they owned, plus an additional multiplier for Okay, you know what? None of this is important. What is important is that certain members of the school faculty viewed this entire event as a way of threatening or bribing some of the students. There was one young woman, for instance, who was told that she'd be set up to win $50 if she gave up her spot in some contest or another, so that the teacher's son could take her place. Another student was told that his winnings would be confiscated if he didn't take responsibility for the fire alarm having been pulled. Nothing really terrible happened, at least, nothing that I heard about, but there were enough shady dealings to make the entire thing seem pretty damned unpleasant. Even for those of us who weren't really involved, the twisted punchline to the whole affair came about when one student offered another a sexual favor in exchange for his weeples. And when folks found about about the deal, only he was suspended. Not, as you might think, because of his involvement in the exchange, but because it was explicitly against the fundraiser's rules to share or give away weeples. TL. Doctor, keep your fuzzy balls to yourself. In my elementary school, we weren't allowed to go inside during recess except to the bathroom. They had a door that led directly onto the field, for a maximum of 5 minutes. The rule doesn't sound too outrageous except this was in Canada, where it would frequently get to minus 20 C, minus 4 freedom units. We also didn't get into a recess until it reached minus 25 C, minus 13 freedom units. Your undershirt had to be white. We had a dress code at my school, where you had to wear a collared shirt. They didn't really care about the color or the design much except you couldn't have really big words or designs on them. One day I actually got written up because I had on a black shirt underneath my polo. The dean that wrote me up really hated me so of course it was a really obsha rule that no one really cared about. But he liked to get me in trouble for whatever dress code violation he could. I even got voted most likely to be out of dress code my senior year I got in trouble so much. You were both prom queen and king. Nice. The word potato was banned in our art department because kids kept shouting it Keith Lemon style. HTTPS colon slash slash Yautu BIDJSF4LWM it to each other from different classes. Forced to use a hair straightener for naturally curly hair in Japan. Curly hair was not allowed. How dare you be the way that you are. All the girls have to keep their hair short. Which was nothing new in an Asian school. Strangest variation on the fact was that the dance club girls could all have long hair, but as soon as they finish their last dance competition, they are required to cut their hair short too. Whoa, you made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.